Today we're going to be reviewing this, which is the Capca Air Force Jet Fighter 172 flavour from Fantastic Plastic. I'm Lee and this is International Scale Modeler. Right, okay, uh, I'm just gonna, we're gonna start by saying I've uh, been a fan of, fan of Fantastic Plastic for a few years now. I've never bought any of their stuff, um, but they had a couple of things on their website which I just could not resist. And I've been looking, eyeing one of these up for a long time, which is the Caprica Air Force Jet Viper. And uh, I love Battlestar Galactica, so um, very struck a chord with me for sure. They, Fantastic Plastic do a lot of short run resin kits um, that you know, you're probably not going to get anywhere else ever again sort of thing. And it's a shame because there's some stuff in their back catalogue that I would absolutely love. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought I'd take the plunge and have a go anyway. I've done some resin stuff. Uh, not too much, I have to say, but I have done some resin stuff. And obviously you have to work safe with resin and things like that. There are a couple of different types of resin. Some are more dangerous than others. Uh, but, uh, so what we're going to do is do a quick review of this that I bought. It's not a big kit. There's not a lot in there. I have a quick sneaky peeky in the box. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll go over to the overhead, as you can see, um, and just have a look what's inside the box. It comes in this well-packaged box. Uh, that's a solid uh, cardboard. It's got the sticker on the top as well. And you open the button, it's full of peanuts. Um, and uh, in there is the kit. The box that they came in from America was well packaged as well. Uh, so that's that's the, what you have inside the box. There you go. Okay, so um, nice looking box, uh, nice looking artwork. And it is just stuck on the box like so. Um, and uh, we've got a bag of plastic here. Now this is a 172 model, so it's gonna be quite small. And uh, we've also got a decal sheet and some instructions, I think. So what we'll do is we'll go to the overhead and uh, we'll have a look at the instructions first for a change, I think. Uh, and basically uh, it says here, Caprica Air, Air Force Jet Viper, um, Caprica Air Force Squadron number and everything. Let's just zoom you in a bit here. Things get a bit better. Um, and basically it tells you a little bit about the uh, sci-fi Battlestar Galactica and, and everything about it, the, the program that this uh, mod is based with. Use a little bit of safety information with working with resin. Uh, before assembly, soak the pieces for 24 hours in warm water, mixed with mild dishwashing detergent to remove any residual mold release, which is very good advice indeed, because if you've got some mold release agent on there still, your uh, paint, no matter how much primer you put on, will not settle properly, that's for sure. Um, and then it says to remove all the flash and everything after you've soaked it. So uh, that uh, overnight is a good way and then just give it a little wipe, I would say, give it a little wipe uh, afterwards. Uh, and then it just goes on to the assembly instructions, which is basically cement fuselage halves, uh, cement in intake panels, cement this, cement that. Um, most people either use a, a resin glue or an epoxy or um, CA glue. I use CA glue with resin. Um, it's just what I like working with. Um, and over there, then you've got some, obviously uh, another nine steps. Uh, there's 10 steps in total, and the last step is painting uh, and decals. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it just gives you an overall light aircraft grade. doesn't give you a color caller for any particular types of paints or anything like that. It just says a light gray. So um, you have, with well, that's what I like about sci -fi. you have a bit of artistic uh, license to decide how you want to do things. I could do that in pink and purple spots if I wanted to. Um, this includes fuel tanks and missiles, control panel pilot seats are matte black, and the JBOT decals included with a kit are Alps printed and therefore very thin and fragile. Uh, it says here we highly recommend coating the decals with micro scale liquid decal film, which is this one here. I have in uh, my uh, micro set and sole uh, holder solution, which you can get from umpretail.com. Um, and uh, so, yeah, obviously, you need to learn how to do, use that properly, but it's literally just painting it on, leaving it for a while, and then you have a film on top of your decal. So, that's the instructions. Uh, very basic. Um, I don't think there's going to be too much to the kit by the looks of it and uh, probably most of it's going to be self-explanatory when you're putting it together anyway. We'll have a quick look at the decals before we look at the kit itself and we'll zoom right in for you. Okay, there you go. And as you can see, uh, they're a lovely uh, matte finish. Um, they're all in register. Uh, they seem to be uh, of a good quality, very high quality indeed. Um, whether they will need a decal film because they literally, it looks like they're straight on uh, onto the paper there. 
Um, what I might do is I might take this uh, fantastic plastic bit out first, try that uh, on a bit of styrene, and then see if we can um, uh, work with them without putting the liquid decal film on. I'd rather not if I didn't have to, because sometimes it can dry quite thick. Uh, you have to be very careful how you apply it. Uh, so um, I want to try that first. If I can get away without doing it, then I'll use those. And in fact, if these can go down without the decal film, they'll actually just melt onto the model, which would be fantastic. But I would imagine you'd have to be careful about the, 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 solu the set solution that you use. You couldn't use a too vigorous or aggressive one, that's for sure. Okay, so that's the decals. Um, we'll zoom this back out again, just so we've got a bit of view. So now we can have a look at the kit itself. Comes in this plastic bag, as you can see. And I am up completely unprepared without my scalpel, so I shall get that now. One scalpel. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at the main fuselage. I've been dying to open this bag ever since I've got it, you know, and it's been sat there for like three months because it's been too hot to do any reviews in here. It's been 40 odd degrees. Uh, now, as you can see, we go to the overhead, it comes in two parts. Um, there's no real locking solution um, in there. It does sit on the, let's have a look. Yeah, there's no pins. Ah, oh, there you go. It fits quite snugly, actually. There's some uh, bars in the middle there. Uh, that stop it from moving. So that's quite nice. It's not like guesswork where it's got to go. As you can see, it goes together reasonably well. Uh, if I squeeze those bits together, let's just pop you in a bit more. As you can see, and uh, so that's gonna need, what I would do first is I'll just slightly rough that up with a, a rough uh, uh, sanding stick, just to give uh, the um, CA glue some key. Uh, and then you can have a look at this all the way around and you can see how it fits. It's not bad at all, it's going to need a little bit of work, um, as with all resin. Um, but you find another model one of these anywhere and I will take my hat off to you. Uh, so um, that's going to need a little bit of work as you can see. Uh, as all resin does, it's a little tiny bit of filler, a little tiny bit of sanding. And I would imagine just a very small amount of scribing just on the lines that meet, that meet on the fuselage join there. On the rear, as you can see, you've got some um, resin that needs to come off and be doctored and everything, but that is uh, part and parcel with resin kits. You're always going to want to, you're always going to have work to do with flash and you know extra overhangs and things like that. But that's not too bad at all. And uh, already you can see just from the shape that that looks fantastic, I think. Right, okay. So we're going to have a look at the glass now, the cockpit. Right, I would imagine this to be vac form. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna zoom you right in here. Let's, uh, if this focuses for you, there you go. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's quite cloudy um, and scuffed and everything. So that's gonna need a polish up, uh, a buff up and a clean. And then uh, I would dip that in a clear as well. Probably I usually go for, believe it or not, shop gas parlor. Yes, I do use Johnson's Clear for canopies, but that's the only thing I will use it for. Um, there is some special products out now, apparently for canopy dipping, which I might try. So I might do that when I build this, I might try that on those or on my next cockpit. Uh, but yeah, so that, that uh, canopy cover, as you can see, is gonna need a bit of work. Uh, no two ways about it. That really does need bringing up. Uh, the ultimate thinny buffers will be ideal for that, uh, part of the sanding solution. Uh, the 3000 grit will be first on there and then straight over with the 12,000 afterwards and that will come up lovely, it really will. So, let's pop that back in there. And let's have a look at this little bag of goodies that's in another section of this bag. This bag has been heat sealed to separate all three sections of the model. And the heat sealing has gone over the little baggies inside, unfortunately, but there you go. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need that anymore. Right, so we've got this little baggie here. And I'm just going to zoom this out again. And that's full of tiny little resin pieces. Right, as you can see, it's quite a bit there. Um, we've got the tail fins, and that is uh, twin tail fins, yeah, either side of the ex uh, exhaust, the jet exhaust. And they look to be uh, very good indeed. In fact, for resin, that's actually very nice. Oh, there's literally going to be hardly any work to do there at all, any cleanup whatsoever. In fact, 
the, even the edges don't need cleaning up on that. So I'm really impressed with that. That's fantastic. So really very good indeed. Uh, you've then got uh, air intake, um, which is in good order as well. I would imagine that fits. It's going to be a bit of work, as you can see, taking off this resin on this side here. So that will that whole chunk there would probably, I would imagine, have to come off. Yep, that's this whole whole resin here um, from there downwards, as you can see. Uh, and that would you need a, a good little saw to do that, and um, a little vice grip if you can, as well as your fingers as well, just to help you work with it. Uh, when you're working with resin, always work on a damp paper towel. So I'll do that. Sucks up the sawdust that comes off of it, the dust that comes off. Uh, we've got the wing tips here. Uh, again, there very well indeed the, the the scribing on them is excellent you can see a lot of the mold release on there um i don't know if i can get you into see all right just a bit more there you go okay uh i doubt if it'll pick it up it might be whiting out a bit but there is a lot of mold release on there so you definitely need to soak these bits uh as the instructions uh, advised uh, but they're, they're in good, uh, really nice as well. Uh, I think the tips of the wings have got to come off yet. These little bits here will have to come off. And that's obviously where they've uh, been molded on the resin block. The, fuse, the uh, fuel pods are again in excellent condition. Really up, very, I mean, hardly any clean up there at all. Just a little bit on the edge where they've been connected to the resin block. But apart from that, really nice, really nice indeed. I'm quite impressed with this actually. A lot easier than I thought. Uh, another two uh, fuel pods as well, so that would mean two on each wing, I would imagine. Cool. Uh, there's another air intake there as well, or is that the exhaust? Right. So there's two air intakes, so maybe if you make a cock up, you've got a spare one. Or actually, well, there's three. Well, it looks like there's three air intakes. Uh -huh. no, Aha, uh, these are the side intakes, okay, for the jets there. And then you've got the uh, underside intake of there. Okay. Uh, again, all good register. They're going to need a bit of work to get them off of the block. Uh, you've got the ejector seat, again, which is in good condition as well. It's all very nice. Um, no work needed on it whatsoever. Uh, the nozzles, again, no work needed. A little bit of clean up here and there, but tiny, tiny bits for resin. Uh, a little bit of fairing, all nicely molded. It seems quite a durable plastic, uh, quite a durable resin actually. So um, it uh, seems nice indeed. This this light coloured stuff, I believe, is the good stuff. Well, not good stuff, but it's better than the, the dark stuff. Um, you've got a little bit on the tail fit on the rear of the missiles here that you'll have to clean up. But apart from that, excellent. Very nice indeed. Good detail. Um, and then it looks like you've got some side pointers there. Again, fantastic detail again, all straight as well, which is nice. Uh, sometimes you get a lot of resin kits and the bits are slightly warped and things like that, but they look to be uh, very straight indeed. Uh, you've then got um, the undercarriage. Again, I can't see any cleanup on that. You know, the, I mean, this bit here obviously has got to come off. This is obviously where it was attached to the, the block, um, but very nice indeed. Again, all very good. Let's have a look at the wheels. Front wheels. Okay, no cleanup needed there either. Oh, really good. This is getting even better. So you've got the turbines here as well. Um, and the nice thing is they've got some little lips there to be able to glue it inside uh, rather than just placing and hoping that it doesn't fall out when you glue it. A um, little bit of cl no cleanup on there apart from the tabs again. Um, and these look like so, oh, so the wheel well flaps, um, covers. Again, okay, good condition. There's nothing there that I can see uh, that's going to need a lot of work, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, it's, it's got you've got the little bits that you've got to take off the blocks and things like that. Uh, but apart from that, that's some fantastic uh, quality molding there. I mean, the, the fuselage is going to need the most work. Everything else is by the by. And the fuselage, as you can see, uh, that's going to need a little bit of work uh, and clamping. Um, but to be honest with you, as long as you match these circles up here on either side, as long as they match up, and which they do perfectly, uh, you're not going to have a problem. There's not going to be any problems there at all. There's some, some angles you need to, to work on. But to be honest with you, it'll be a case of, uh, with as with any resin kit, you really need to tidy all the pieces up first before you start and test fit. 
uh, before you even start to use glue or anything like that. Uh, that way you can see before you start putting it together if you have to take a, a bit out of the main fuselage or a bit out of the piece. Um, you do need to work clever with resin because um, it's never all just perfect, that's for sure. But uh, I really like that. I can't remember the price. I've already flashed it up at the beginning. Um, but uh, that's going to be, uh, really, literally, you could probably put that together in a day quite easily, ready for paint. And that will be one of those... Literally, you get everything together, get the cockpit done first, um, whack the glass on, and away you go. Uh, that will be, you know, that could be done quite easily. And there's not a, it's not a tricky paint job, as you can see. It's just a nice grey, um, and uh, it's got panel lines on there. They've accentuated the panel lines on the picture, and I don't care what you say, oh, I like panel line washes, so I'm going to use uh, the UMP Dark Dirt on that. And uh, that's going to come up really nice. And in fact, if I get another one, uh, I might get another one and if, see if I can get this other jet here as well. So um, so for, that's my first review of a, a fantastic plastic kit. And in summary, I really like it. Comes well packaged um, in a no frills box. Uh, nice solid box, I have to say, very solid indeed. Uh, your kit's not going to break in there. They pad it out enough so it's not going to move around as well. Lots of peanuts in there. They're reasonably well packaged. They're all in separate baggies, what needs to be in separate baggies. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be hard to put together either. Um, so for me, that's a recommend. Um, I'd be interested to see how it does go together, but to be honest with you, resin kits, you can you can see quite easily whether it's going to work or not, and I think that one will. Um, and it's not going to take too long to do, and I'm going to look, I think it's going to look awesome. Um, and it's one of those you might want to put on a stand as well. It looks like it's actually got a slot for a stand on the bottom, so be interesting to see if that's the case. Uh, but anyway, so that's a thumbs up from me, and that's the uh, Caprico Air Force Jet Viper in 172 from Fantastic Plastic, which is fantasticplastic.com. Um, and if you like short run sci-fi stuff, uh, myself, I am now going to concentrate on sci-fi. I've got about 200 uh, tank and aircraft kits that I'm going to put up for sale uh, because I think sci-fi is where I, that's what really gets my mojo and motivates me to do some work. And I do a lot of 3P, 3D printing sci-fi now as well, and I've been working on that, as you can see over my shoulder. Um, but uh, yeah, sci-fi is where I'm at. So I think Fantastic Pass is going to get a lot of my money in the future from now on. But anyway, uh, that's the end of the review. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a nice short one. Uh, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.